I'm Professor Michael Minelli. I'm one of the aldermen of the City of London, and I'm absolutely delighted that we are co-hosting with Birkbeck this event today at the Chlor Management Centre on climate and sustainability. The history of the City of London in sustainability, and particularly climate change, is deep. Uh, in 1953, the first Clean Air Act in the United Kingdom. Contributions to the Johannesburg summits, contributions to Copenhagen COP. In particular, the creation of the carbon markets after COP3 in Kyoto in 1997, and the formation of the EU Emissions Trading Scheme, which was launched in 2005. In 2006 and 7. We were also responsible for introducing the stranded assets debate. How could so much be on the balance sheets of all the corporations around the world that they could actually burn it, and the truth is they can't, leading to potential systemic instability. And most recently, we've had an enormous success with the first issuance of a sovereign policy performance bond. This is a bond which pays more interest if a government fails to meet its targets. It would be analogous to many of the other performance incentive bonds out there, which are about $110 billion last year, rising from just $11 billion the year before. But this policy performance bond was issued by the government of Chile for $2 billion uh, and is tied to their 2030 targets, which is very exciting. It's long been said that we need to move to action. Uh, it's been said quite a bit, actually. What's exciting t today, though, is combining the youth and energy of the students with the real issues of finance. That, I think, is important. I think the second thing is, as we move to practical action, it's more than just policy or, or studying or the economics of it. It's actual practical things about how we're going to rebuild our built environment, our transportation systems, our energy supplies. And this, I think, draws upon the wealth of students. And we would hope that this would lead this type of cooperation to people realizing the value of particularly mature students at Birkbeck and their ability to make major contributions to corporations that are now trying to really change. I may be being a bit controversial, but I don't think there are new opportunities. There are opportunities, but they're the old opportunities. Actually, every course needs to be embedded with its contribution to our big global problem, which is climate change. And they are being there. So whether you're an architect, an engineer, or a medical student, you should be looking at this very much in the round. I think things have moved in particular in the area of policy, where it's fairly straightforward what needs to be done, uh, carbon pricing and markets and bonds, uh, to really practicable action. And that's where corporates are moving. And I think that what Birkbeck offers in terms of practical education uh, and integration into the economy will make the biggest difference. So the opportunities are there for everybody to make their contribution. The City of London was once explained to me as a stool uh, resting on three legs. Uh, the first leg was the corporation itself, the oldest continuous democracy in the world, 1,200 years old. The wards, the 25 of them, which are equally ancient, and the livery companies, which are the old guilds. There are 110 of those and four guilds aspiring to become a worshipful company. And in all of these cases, they're working at many levels. From the ground up, we have the Livery Climate Action Group, who's co-hosting today's event at Birkbeck. And this group is working to decarbonize all the activities of a livery company, transportation, meals, halls. The next level up, each company is using its expertise to try and develop ways of helping society, particularly in the economics and the work sector. For example, the water conservators have produced an action plan on water. The management consultants are trying to teach companies to move from greenwashing and statements into practical changes in, say, an aviation company's use of fuel or a cement company's use of kilning. And finally, uh, areas like the engineers who've been trying to bring leading edge technologies uh, up to date and inform people, such as what's the real state of fission, fusion, small, small modular reactors, etc. So every company has been doing its outreach and the 55,000 strong livery movement forms the community that helps the City of London move forward. I think the biggest barrier to climate change now is economic. Everybody's aware, we, we know about it. 
we're conscious that there's only so much our behavioral change can do. For example, about a 6% reduction during the maximum phase of lockdown. So we definitely need a society to put in new transportation systems, new energy systems, new ways of heating and cooling and insulating our buildings, new ways of agriculture. It's fairly obvious, but do we want to pay for it? The current estimates are somewhere between about 500 and 1,000 pounds per individual per year for the next 28 years if you see uh, net zero 2050 as the target. But unfortunately, we're not having that debate. My first debate on climate change in the city was in 1984, and it ended where it would end today. Does society really want to pay for it?